So, Richie, you have a, a great story about something that happened to you in a John Coltrane tribute concert that you were playing with Lieb and Eddie Gomez, Jack DeJanet, and Wayne Shorter. And uh, why don't you talk a little about that? We were all in Japan in 1987, a band with Lee, Dave Liebman, Wayne Shorter, Jack DeJanet, Eddie Gomez, and myself. It was a special tribute to Coltrane. And um, it was the 20th year anniversary of Coltrane's death. And it was in a place, your near your mooring land outside of Tokyo, it has uh, 20,000 people outside in the summer, in July. And um, the band was, it was a fantastic experience. We played India Impressions, Mr. PC, and um, After the Rain and Naima. Dave and I played it too well. Anyway, I never played with Wayne before. Everybody else, we were blood brothers. So it was, but it was Wayne. It was incredibly, I was very excited and a little bit intimidated mostly inspired. And we finished the concert and it became a video and it's pretty much available everywhere on YouTube. And we're at the party after and Miles was playing there with his group with Skull and Al Foster. Steve Gant was there with Jack with um his band called Stuff. The big party in the penthouse. So we're sitting there and everybody's drinking champagne and I wanted to ask Wayne the question. And the question was, simple, how does he come up with those other notes on the chords, those chromatic notes? And also, the melody, the footprints, is an incredible little miniature masterpiece. And then, and then, and then, and where does he come up with these notes? I could never think of a C minor seven chord the same way that with that with that iconic melody. So I'm sitting there, we drink a champagne. Wayne is very kind, very sweet, smiling, doesn't talk very much. I ask him a question. I say, Wayne, can I ask you a question? And he looks at me and goes, If you have to in other words, I wish you wouldn't, but if you have to, no problem. Just tell me the real guru, the real shit. So I said, Wayne, how do you come up with those notes, those other notes on the chords? Just like that. So he sits back, he closes his eyes, and I think he's pissed. And that I figured, well, that's the end of my career. But then, but no, he's just thinking. And he says, Richie, don't ever let the name of a chord on the paper stop you from playing any note that you really hear. Whoa. Hydrogen bomb. Light bulb. Ding. And what he did was he's so perceptive. He went past my question to what was really my problem at that time. Is that I was an intuitive player, but I was also very intellectual. I learned that way. And Sometimes, especially you know, 40 years ago, it would come out of my playing. I was not happy all the time with my no choices, blah, 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 right? And he saw that it was a, a visual problem. It was a paper problem. I was looking at the chord and thinking, even though I didn't know I was, C minus of it. So what did he say? He said, don't let the name of a chord on a piece of paper stop you from playing any note that you really hear. In other words, forget about what it looks like, forget about the intellectual name of it, and trust your ear. Trust your ear. And of course your heart, because the heart supports the ear, right? Wow. This is like a smack in the face from the Zen master. Just like, wake up, right? And it was so true and the other thing, it was, it was not such a simple thing, because the part at the end of it where he said, don't let the name of the chord on a piece of paper stop you from playing, here's the part, any note that you really hear. So he's saying, he's qualifying you, he's saying, 
yeah, you just don't play any note. Every note's not going to be perfect. If you're really hearing it, in other words, his implication is that it will be right because it's, it, it's, it's really being heard. And even if it's not uh, what would be considered to be a right note or a good note, it will be right because of what will happen after the, after you play the note. A note by itself is nothing. It's mostly, it's not music. But it, it's a phrase. The note is one in the phrase. So this was a fantastic lesson for me, and it really improved my playing overnight, it improved my attitude towards what I was playing. And those kinds of moments, I had many in my career, because I was around those guys. That was my good fortune. Awesome story, Richie. Thank you. <laughs>